Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Tractor Man 44 here. Hey, you know, sometimes you need a little tray, you know, put some tools in, like in the uh, in an open toolbox or whatever. A buddy of mine called me this morning and just need me to make him a couple of small trays. He gave me a specific dimension. Yeah, they can be nominal. Doesn't have to be just perfect exact because it doesn't have a fixed area that it fits into. And so I'm going to show you exactly what I do. Now, you, just about anybody can do this if you have the basic hand tools, hand folders, hand seamers, and maybe those bending bars or something like that. Uh, but it would definitely be better if you had a, a cheap box and pan break, you know, from Harbor Freight or something like that. Uh, but it definitely is doable by hand. Might not be quite as crisp, but it's still doable. The main thing is figuring out what it is that you want to do with that box. So let's take a look, see what I'm going to do here. So you got to think about what you want to do or what you're going to make. So we're going to have four and a half inches plus two going up the side plus another two over here and a half inch to fold over and a half inch to fold over. So that's going to be four and one half plus two plus two. So that's four plus another one is five. So four and a half plus five equals nine and a half inches. The length is going to be 15 plus two plus two plus a half plus a half. So that's 15 plus five equals 20 inches. So our cut size is going to be nine and a half by 20. Nine and one half by 20. And then inside here is going to become the actual tray that we're wanting to build. The trick is going to be notching this in a fashion in which we do everything we need to do to secure the corners of the box adequately and also make sure we don't get our fingers cut. So let's cut this out then I'll show you how to lay that out. So here's our cut size right here. We went ahead and used our scribe and we scribed the half inch all the way around the perimeter so the half inch is marked. We measured in two inches off of that half inch scribe line and we got a two inch mark all the way around the perimeter. So I'm going to mark those there so we can prepare to, uh, to make the notches. I've got them with the scribe but I'm going to highlight them with the magic marker. I went ahead and laid this out in magic marker so you can actually see it and I added some marks inside here that are roughly half inches inside from the the actual layout marks and there's a reason for that. Those are going to become our cut lines as we trim this out in preparation for folding. So follow along and I'll show you what it is that we're doing. We're going to go to this this cut line right here or this mark. We're going to cut it in to right there. We're going to trim that right there like that. We're going to cut this off here a little bit of an angle. We're going to cut this off at a little bit of a steeper angle and that'll come into play in a minute and you'll see why. That's our cut for the corner. All the way into the corner on this one. Again a little steeper on this one. Now you can see we have a tab. We have a tab. We have a fold over that's going to be a safety hem and a fold over that's going to be a safety hem here and here and here. So we're going to duplicate that effort on the other end. There's a layout for our box right here. So let's go fold it up and see what happens. And you're going to see why we did what we're doing over here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take these half inch edges and fold those all the way over. And we're going to spank them, but we're not going to spank them really, really hard. I hate using the magic marker because now I can not I can barely see my scribe lines. So the degree of accuracy on this is going to be somewhat lower. Now if you really want to reinforce these edges, you can cut long heavy gauge wire and you can actually lay inside this as you fold that over and get a real strong reinforced rib right there on the outside edge. Now we're just going to put a bit of a crack on this guy right here. I'm going to crack this one up just a little bit. Just a bit of a crack, just enough to give us a definitive mark here. Go ahead and lay this back out here. Let's go back to the other table. Now that we got them folded this far, we take our hand seamers right here on these little tabs. We've already got them already started, so we just fold those tabs in just a little. Pull those tabs in, then we go to the box and pan break. Set a tab that's about the right dimension.
Now you're ready for the final step. Remember the tabs I told you to cut at a little bit uh, more of an angle? You just roll this back and stick that tab underneath that hem. Sometimes you have to take your pocket knife. You have to take a pocket knife and kind of open that up a little because you squash it down sometimes. Stick those tabs under those corners like that. Or those tabs are folded underneath the safety hems. Now we're going to go ahead and pop rivet that in place. Sometimes that's a little bit tough to get an eighth inch pop rivet in there, but this time it works just fine. Now we take our handy little square anvil. Now you really want to rivet them over. There's a nice and neat little tool tray. No sharp edges anywhere. If you do have a little point or something sticking up, this one here does not, but if you do, you can dull your points. Now the cool thing about making uh, making little tool trays like this is you're, you're only limited by your imagination. You can make handles, and there's all a variety of different handles that you can make for these things. You can make them much wider, you know, to carry larger tools or whatever, you know, like out to work on a car or a truck or a tractor. You can make them much deeper. You can put shelves in them. You can do all kinds of things. You're just limited by what you can think about uh, whenever you're doing it. But this is exactly what my old buddy Dave's wanted, and i got to make two more of them. So well, here's all three boxes I made for my buddy. They're all three uh, nominally the same dimension, 4.5 by 15 by, uh, by 2 inches deep. Like I say, these are just for hand tools. They're for specialty item hand tools, which is why I wanted them this particular dimension. You can make them, like I said, in virtually any gauge material you want within reason. And you can make them uh, you know, all kinds of variations. You can make a little hip roof uh, ends on them and things like that. You can put the uh, handle down the center. That's actually a trough to where you can actually carry with little partitions, different nuts, bolts, screws, whatever like that in it, washers, uh, things that you normally use, uh, very popular items you use on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, any any variation, you're just limited entirely by your thinkability, your creativity, and uh, and in some cases the tools, but the vast majority of this could be done entirely. I have no idea what specialty tools he's going to throw in. I just grabbed a couple of end wrenches out of one of my roll around toolboxes. Uh, this is going to actually go into a service truck in some of the shelves of your service truck for some specialty items. Hope you all enjoyed that one. It's quick and simple. And this is Trackman 44, and I'm out of here, guys.